Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My channel is about DIY project I was uh, working on. From last year on, um, I started my audio processing boards and then um, identified the challenge that when trying to put the small uh, components, it's very difficult. So therefore I started the idea okay. of uh, making a pick and place machine. And then um, when I look at the market, I see the 3D printer is a very good uh, candidate for uh, making a pick and place machine. Therefore, I started a journey of converting the 3D printer into a pick and place machine. And I have been converting um, multiple different pick and place machines, um, including Anycubic, and Mega Zero, and uh, Enders CR10, and Enders uh, Ender 3 V2. And now here, what you can see is uh, Kingroom KP3S Pro S1. Um, I got a suggestion to look into this uh, 3D printer. Um, the reason is because this, this printer comes with a linear rail for X, Y, and Z, um, which makes the movement um, stable, uh, more stable than the other ones. And also, um, uh, you can see this one is a very uh, small form factor. And the play, the build play here is uh, 20 by 20. Um, you can see actually I have already adapted to um, a pick and place machine and uh, use the standard components I have. So you see this uh, base play, fiducias and, and feeders. And one of the things I have uh, uh, changed is uh, actually the adapter. Um, this 3D printer comes with the direct extruder. Uh, which means this part is uh, contains an uh, extruder by itself. Um, when adapting, um, I have in mind that I don't want to um, remove all the extruder, I just want to make the switch e a, a bit easier. Um, therefore, I adapted the way that here you can see this is the, the fan case of the direct extruder. And to adapt to this one, I make it only need, we only need to uh, remove this fan and then um, the adapter can use the same screw hole with the fan and then um, it will be able to mount it to here um, uh, nicely. So this is the, the modification and the head, you can, you can actually see um, this is the standard head. And the other thing I have improved is that you can see here the lighting, uh, the, the bottom camera lighting has been changed because I basically improved the, the lighting of the, the system now. So here now I use the circle lighting which is um, um, more um, evenly light distribution. So um, it make it much stable when calibrating the nozzle tip or identify the, the components. And the same thing I have done also for the top camera, I also modify it to the um, circle lighting, so make it easier to identify the fiducia. Um, this fiducia is using the, the how um, way to make the plate, and then usually for this, uh, um, this kind of fiducia, it's uh, not flat on the surface, which makes the reflection not evenly um, distributed. You can see a little bit shadows, so that also makes it hard to um, identify. So with the circle lighting I have built in now, uh, it's much easier to identify the, the fiducia and locate the board. Um, the other thing is I have also built in the uh, operator for the lighting. Um, the thing is, um, I don't want to open the case in order to connect the pin from the main board because that way you uh, different 3D printer come with different main board and it makes it harder to adapt. My main idea is that we only need to touch this part and then we don't need to touch anything inside the, the 3D printer main board. Um, so I actually got, I got a gadget from China, it's this one. And then this is basically a USB relay, and then I use that to um, control the, the lighting as well um, on the top camera. Uh, I will make another video uh, to show you how to integrate this one um, as uh, um, operator. So um, I can show you now um, how this works. So I will first home the device. Okay, now I'm, I, I'm gonna home the, home the device. So you can see the, the device is homing now.
So when it's uh, um, after homing, it will look at home fiducia, it's uh, here. Um, I also built in the oculator so you can see the, the light will be um, turning on and off by controlling by the open DMP. You can see now the light is actually open twice and they actually adapt the um, fiducia already. Um, then the other thing the other thing I want to show is because of the lighting, it will be much easier to uh, identify the basically the fiducias on board. So now I will let it uh, recognize the fiducia. So you just press this button. So now you can see it actually um, nicely light up the fiducia and you can see the, the color of the fiducia is very even. Yeah, so now it's actually um, been sent, being centered to the board. Then we can we can see the the fiducia actually it located the board well, um, which is uh, which is very good. So this lighting helps a lot. Uh, I didn't build a um, oculator for button camera because I see. The bottom camera uh, constant lighting um, it's also easier to identify the um, basically the components. So as this is done, I will um, let it place the components. I first need to set those components to unplaced. Okay, so now I have uh, uh, marked the uh, place, the component is unplaced. So the next thing is I will um, let it calibrate the uh, nozzle tip and then uh, start placing the, uh, the boards. I only prepared the 0201 components now, um, so I will see how well it does with the 0201. start a job. So it goes to calibration first. Uh, you can see as the circle lighting is uh, used in the um, uh, bottom camera so it's much easier to calibrate the nozzle tip. So we start placing the, the first component now. So also, also this um, um, top camera lighting uh, make it easier to identify the components, um, also the, the position of the components. And the reason I need to have an oculator is um, uh, because when using the calibrating the nozzle tip, I don't want the top camera to be on because that will affect the um, calibration. The lighting will be changed. So um, it's very handy when uh, calibrating the nozzle tip, the top camera is off.
Okay, so the placement is done. Uh, actually, I also increased the, the uh, speed of this uh, head movement. So uh, by going down and going up, it's actually uh, much faster than the last video I have shown. So now it's, uh, it's done. Let's uh, look at how well it placed, actually. Um, I'll just, just look at here. So actually, you can see from the uh, screen, it's uh, actually in place very well. And the same for the others. This is the camera view. Um, yeah. This is the, the uh, from the top camera. And if I move over here, uh, I will take it out and then we can look at the ball itself so um, you can see actually here those O201 components are very nicely in position yeah. so as a summary the Kimrum KP3S Pro S1 um, it's actually also pretty good it comes with uh, uh, the silent uh, motor driver for uh, basically X, Y, and Z, which makes the movement also um, pretty stable and very quiet. And then also with the linear rail, it comes also um, um, the movement also quite very smooth. And it's uh, being used to place O201 components, which is also uh, pretty good in place. Um, therefore, I think this uh, printer is also um, a good candidate for. Uh, placing the, the PCB board for a smaller board. Um, the downside is that, of course, the build play is really small, like 20 by 20. That means uh, um, you can also play, you can only play the smaller board, or you can play, uh, uh, put only less um, feeders uh, on top. Therefore, yeah, it's um, um, compared to the bigger ones, uh, it, it will have less space. This is the major downside. Um, apart from that, uh, I think this printer also um, uh, pretty good uh, if you just want to place like uh, 10, 20 components on a, on a smaller board, then it would not be a problem. Okay, so I didn't notice this one. Okay, yeah. So that's um, basically it and, and uh, thanks for watching and I will make uh, more video shows about the uh, uh, improvement on the uh, camera and also the, the top camera and I will make the model available in the in my website and also um, yeah if you like my video just uh, um, like and subscribe to support me and then uh, see you in the next video